That's a profound truth that we know from Scripture that God said, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God, and that my sheep hear my voice and they know me and they would not follow the voice of another. Did you know that your life, your brain, your mind, your intelligence, your spirit, and your faith is like this cup? What you put into it determines what you get. Now, when you read the Word of God, you are putting into this cup, as it were, the Word of God. So you will build up your faith. But as you hear it, as you understand it, like if you hear it in church or you hear it on a tape or a video or you have someone you talk to and you share it with them and you can hear your own voice speaking it, then it goes into your cup of your understanding or the cup of your life and it begins to fill up in you faith. Now, there's other things that you can put in there. You can go to school and they can teach you certain things and you can begin to fill up your cup. But you see, if your cup is full of only the world and its ways, then you'll find that you have less faith to believe in the things that God has said that Jesus has taught us. Because Jesus said literally we could hear his voice. Now, the only thing I can tell you is this. Bluntly, if you haven't heard God speak to you audibly in your ears, it's probably because your cup's full of somebody else. Something else. And there's only one way to get rid of it. You have to pour it out. Because you see, God also has a cup and he's saving it until the last day and in those last days he said I have put all my wrath into a cup and I will pour it out and it will happen but until he does he keeps putting all of his anger into a place reserved for the moment when he pours it out upon the world your life was meant to be a cup that you were pouring out daily to people that needs to be filled with faith because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God it needs to be filled with love with joy with peace with meekness kindness temperance gentleness with all those qualities that unfortunately I can tell you this as much as you try to fill your cup up the world is pouring into you what it wants you to do because whenever you take in with your eyes hear with your ears or read and understand into your mind you are changing and rearranging what God is trying to put into you because the world is at enmity with you you weren't designed for this world you're designed for eternity you're passing through this world and you're meant to bring light into the world you were meant to be the answer you were meant to be the physical representation of God in this world you're not his hands and feet. You are actually Jesus himself as he works in you to accomplish through you his word to the world because they're looking for something different. They're not looking for another person full of a cup of the news, a cup of the turmoil in the world, a cup of anger, a cup of wrath, a cup of malice, a cup of destruction. They're looking for living waters. Jesus said, if you were following him, out of you would spring rivers of living waters. So what cup are you today? Are you a cup of coffee with a quick fix just to get by in the morning? And then you're going to have a caffeine crash? Are you a Powerade drinker where you're jumping into sugars and guanos and guaranas and everything to get your system metabolized so that you can just be addicted and constantly go, go, go? Or are you, out of your soul, out of the cup that you are inside, pouring forth rivers of living water that give life to those that are thirsty? It's up to you what you hear, and it's up to you what you do. But the cup that you fill is you. And I would suggest that the more that you're in the world and of the world, the less you are of God. So change your direction and change what you're putting in you and you may find that you'll have more peace, more love, more joy, and more satisfaction in this life you're passing through, as well as touching others for the kingdom of God's sake. In daily light, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. Our Savior, Jesus Christ, hath abolished death,
and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. He will swallow up death in victory, and the Lord God shall wipe away tears from off all faces, and the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth. For the Lord has spoken it, and he will do it. When this corruptible shall put on incorruption, and this immortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but a power and of love and of a sound mind. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Today, as you look at it, each and every day, if you look at death and are afraid, then I suggest to you that you've incorporated into the cup of your life too much of the world and not enough of God. Recognize that as you put into yourself what God has said, as you read it, as you study it, as you apply it to your life, as you let it sink in, you'll find that you don't have to do much of anything. It's going to affect you whether you know it or not, because God promised it would. The same way is true as if you're constantly putting into your mind things that tear down. Because if you're always around violence, you'll become violent. If you're always around negative, you'll become negative. If you're always around darkness, you will become dark. But if you are around the light, as Jesus said, we should be, then you will become full of light. Jesus said, if your eye be full of light, how great is the light within? But if it be full of darkness, how great the darkness. Where is the way where lighteth dwelleth, where light dwelleth? God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. The Father hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Yet all the ch you are all the children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. As you go with God, God goes with you. And God will either work around you, in you, through you, or to you. And sometimes he's doing all at the same time. So you can either participate with him and experience the fullness that God wants for you to have. Or you could be a cup half empty of God or half full of the world. I guess it all depends on how you look at it. But I know that when I taste and see that the Lord is good, I know what his cup is full of. What's your cup full of today?